office computer. Okay, file gloving or wildcards. So, wildcards represent letters and characters used to specify the file name for searches. File gloving is the process of pattern searching or pattern matching using wildcards. The wildcards are officially called meta character wildcards, but for short, we just call them wildcards. For example, you can use a wildcard to get a long list of all the files in a present working directory that start with the word new. Let's say that you're working in a directory that has 20, like 2,500 files, and you only want to know all of those who, who have the word new at the beginning of the file. Do you want, are you going to literally go over the output of that command one by one? It's 20,000 files. Or are you just going to type ls and then a wildcard to match only the word, only the files that start with the word new? Okay, you can use wildcards to manage directories faster. Move or delete a group of files instead of just one file. Locate files based on a portion by just by a portion of their file names. A lot of times you forget the name of a file, but you remember that the file has the word cheese in it. So you can search for it just by have just using that part of the word instead of the full word. Uh, create files and directories quicker, much quicker. Trust me. You already saw me using, well, not wildcards, but you know, shell expansion. But they go on the same category. There are a couple of wildcards in Linux. Let's start with the simplest and most useful: the star wildcard, right? Or the asterisk. This wildcard matches any number of character, including no character whatsoever. A star alone matches anything or nothing. For example, if you run the command ls star .txt, this is going to list all the files that end in .txt. Let's make this more interesting. I'm going to create touch file. Oh, sorry. I'm in the var directory. So I'm going to create touch file 1 to 10 that txt and i'm going to also create file one two five that png and i'm also going to create file that oops one yeah come on a to z Right? I'm going to type ls, right? See, this is a problem here, right? And the reason why this is a problem is because, as you can see, if I want to list only the files that are that .png, at this point right now, there is no way for you to do it because you don't know. But if I am only interested in listing the files that end in that .png, all I have to do is this. ls. I don't care about the name, but I want it to end in that PNG. Does that make sense? Yeah, Professor. So it's yeah. essentially like a file explorer. No, it's exactly what it is. A wildcard is, is a symbol that represents a set of files or a parameter to search. For instance, I want to list all the files that start with letter F and end in letter G. What I'm telling LS is, I want you to list everything that at the beginning has an F. I don't care what it has in the middle, but I do care that it has a G in the end. Does that so make sense? You're telling the command just to list the file that start with f and ignoring any other letter after f right yes but i want the last letter to be g, g. Okay. i can also tell the command hey i want you to move let's create a directory called mkdir and let's call this directory called uh png png files right and i want to tell the directory hey i want you to move everything that ends in that PNG to the PNG files directory. Done. 
notice that if I do ls png files, all the .png files were inside the PNG files directory. Just so you know, you have a question in your midterm that requires you to organize a folder using wildcards only. So this is important. Which one do you think would be faster for me? Open the file manager, then with, with the control key, select all the pictures, then move it to the folder, but the folder wasn't created, so I have to create a folder. Or just running this command? No, just running this command. That's why wildcard are very, very useful. That's just one way which you can use the start character. Obviously, you're going to have more difficult examples in your lab, but you do the lab with me, so that's fine. Here are some examples of using the start wildcard using the ls command. Notice that for each and every one of these examples, I provided an explanation in the button. Your job is to read it. Let's use the question mark wildcard. You remember when I said that the star wildcard matches one character, no character, or any number of characters? Very useful, right? Yes. What happens when you only want to look for one character? You only care about one character. For example, notice that in my terminal over here, when I type ls, I have file that a number and then that txt, two characters. But I only, but I want to list all the files over here, right? That have one character after the word file and nothing else. Notice which files did the ls command return? That have one character after the word file. Exactly. Nothing or everything else was ignored. What if I want two characters? What happened? No such file uh, directly. Extra letter. Well, no, if you take a look here, nothing matches that search criteria. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing matches that search criteria. If you had a file AA, it would match something. Or exactly. So if I do touch, touch file uh, one one two 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 professor a number doesn't count as a character yes it does you are referring to this right yes sir okay i want you to count the characters that you have after the word e nothing it's a number N after it's the word character after the, the e i have too. oh okay so that, the, that txt is being considered as characters after. of course it, aren't that part, isn't that part of the name yeah it's a character too you have one two three four five six characters after letter e yeah. the thing is that in windows you are used to the idea that the extension file name is not part of the name which is a ludicrous idea of course the extension is part of the is part of the name now I'm gonna type ls one more time. Notice that now if I do this command over here, it should return a number of files. For instance, all the way from 11 to 22. Because now I have all of these files that have two characters after the E. Does that make sense? Yes, Professor. Yeah, Professor. You want Perfect. to file one.txt, you would use four question marks. Exactly. I want you to pay attention to this one that I have over here. If you want to list all hidden files, you can use ls period hyphen hyphen, sorry, question mark, question mark, and a star, which will match all the files that start with a period or a double period and have any character after it. Now, why? Will that work? Now let's let's do this. Let's do ls minus a, right? Period hyphen hyphen and then a start. Right? This list all the hidden files, but why? Is the a minus? Because hidden files have a period at the beginning. What do you leave? I gotta go give you the cookie. Yes. See that. 
this wildcard is telling the LS command, hey, I want you to give me every character, every file that starts with the period. It has two characters after the period, and I don't care how many characters it has after that. Doesn't that match the description of pretty much a hidden character, a hidden file? Yes. Yeah. There you go. That's a little trick for you. Okay. Now, I want you to read what's afterwards. I was hoping somebody told me that isn't what I did the same as doing this. Or doing this. Just a change in the order of how to display it. Right? But if I do this, right? If I do that, shouldn't that be the same as using this? No. There is an, ex there is an explanation no. what? There's an explanation for it. The problem with this is that, don't forget that in Linux, a period, a period on its own represent the present working directory. Mm -hmm. So when you do ls minus la, see that at the top, what is it? Ah, just want it, I just want this one, this guy. Notice that at the, at the beginning, you have these two periods, a period and two periods. This period over here represents the present working directory. These two periods over here represent the previous directory. So when I do this ls period star, I am including the previous directory as well because it matches this search criteria. I want to exclude this search criteria by telling the ls command that I am looking for anything that starts with the period. It has two characters after the period, and then I don't care the name of the file. That's why it is not the same. Here are some examples of using the question mark wildcard. And now let's talk about brackets. The brackets wildcard is used to match a single character in a range. This is important. A brackets wildcard is used for matching a single character in a range of characters. How do you use it? Take a look at this. Match all the files that have a vowel after the letter F. F, the vowels, and then the star. What you are telling the LS command is, I am looking for a file that starts with letter F. It has a vowel after letter F, but I'm not particularly concerned with the rest of the letters. How about give me a file that doesn't have a vowel after letter F? For example, if I want to tell list all the files that start with the word file, but after the word file, do not have a character in the beginning. Sorry, sorry, a vowel in the end. Uh... And I don't care the, about the file extension. Notice that all of the output over here indicates, first of all, all the numbers, right? Because mm -hmm. the numbers are not vowels, and then consonants are not vowels either. Does that make sense? Yeah, because the exclamation point mark in programming means false or not in there. Yeah, actually, there is a joke I want to play to you here. a little mean. Yes, you're right. In most programming language, uh, exclamation mark, yeah. The exclamation mark is the negation of whatever is after the exclamation mark. Yeah. Isn't it cool to be a Linux user and that you get to understand all of that before you even get to write a single line of code in your life? Yeah, it makes more sense now. <laughs> Oh my God. I wish I would have taken this class before all the programming classes I have to take. It would have made your life easier. 
I, I bet you that because that's why programming was way easier for me than it was for all the people that were taking the class with me because a lot of the concepts that I was introduced to, I already knew how they work. Yeah, I, this is my first semester and I actually got the last C in this class. So you're lucky because when lucky. you get to when you get to learn Python, there are a lot of things that I already explained to you that other people, you know, that you're not going to struggle with. Especially well, when we get to programming Linux by writing a scripts, a scripting will be literally your first programming language. Unless you know how to code already, then, you know. Well, even it's kind of funny because I'm, I'm actually taking this class. I'm taking 106 and uh, 106, 107 and 108 all together. Oh, you did exactly the same thing I did. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing everything at once. So take a look at this. Yeah, that's that's a great idea, which is because all those classes are related to each other. So when you're doing homework for one, you are studying for the other. That's just you did it the right way. So to match all the files that have a range of letters, right, that start with F, you do this because A to C includes the entire, you know, Latin alphabet, right? Mm -hmm. You can also do it with Cyrillic works if you speak Russian. Like I have the Russian um, alphabet here on my computer, so I can also specify the Cyrillic uh, alphabet over there. One thing that I do is that sometimes I use either Cyrillic or Greek words in my passwords. Good luck brute forcing them. How about match all the files who have a number in their file name? I like this one. I use this one a lot. I know that the file that I'm looking for has a number in the name. So I'm going to do LS. I don't care about the beginning. I don't care about the end. But in the middle, I'm looking for a number. Notice that the output gives me exactly files who have a number at some point in their file name. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. Then you can see the rest of the examples over here. For instance, match all the files whose name begin with a letter with letter A from A to B or start with letter S to C. LS, A, P, S, C. For instance, what you're telling the, the LS command here is, I'm looking for a file that starts with letter A all the way to letter P, any of those letters from A to P, but it can also have letter S and letter C. Isn't that cool? To match all files whose name begins with any of these two characters set, either letters F, A to F, or P to Z. That's why I'm telling you, if you tell me, let's go look for a file, let's go play the game of hide and seek. I'm going to hide a file in the file system. You use the graphical interface. I'm going to use the command line. Let's see who gets the file first. I'm going to type a command, and I'm going to go get coffee meanwhile you spend your life clicking away. <laughs> OK. To match all the files whose name begins with any three-letter combination and the, current, and the current user's name. So the username is in the name of the file. And it has a combination of three letters over here. For example, I'm going to take, let me see. Yeah, let's take a screenshot. Let's take a screenshot and let's save it. Let's save it. Let's save it right over there in the pictures directory. Save. Let's say you're a person who takes a lot of screenshots, right? You take a lot of screenshots. And you have a lot of pictures in your pictures directory, right? Yes. I want to create a wildcard that is going to match this. I can do this. LS, give me anything that starts with a number 0 to 9. And I don't care how it ends. And I don't care how it ends. Look at the output. But if I have a lot of them, I can literally tell it, hey, I am looking for something that starts with 2020, right? Hyphen. And then has a number after that, and I don't care what else it has. How about this? A number, a number, and a number. One number, another number, another number, and another number. Now, can, you can say, you can say this, right? 2000 to 2020, right? To 
So you're looking for a file that starts with the year, with one year, either from 2000 to 2020. It can be 2019, 2018, 2010, 2009. And we're looking also that after that, the picture was taken between the months of how many months in a year? 12, 12. right? Mm -hmm. So you start at January and you finish in 12. December, December, right? Mm -hmm. Then the date is also formatted into what? Dates, yeah. days. Mm -hmm. You have to start at day one, but months can have up to 31 days, right? Because mm -hmm. it can be any months. You're looking at specifically for a date that yeah. happened between the year 2000 and 2020. It happened between the month of January and December, and it happened between the days one and 31st of any given month. And after that, it has a hyphen, and you don't particularly care about the rest. But you do care that the file extension is PNG or JPEG or JPEG. Uh, actually, let's do GIF, right? I think I used the wrong expansion brace here. Yep, I used the wrong expansion brace. My mistake, guys, over there. Erase that stuff from your mind. Let's fix it real quick. There you go. This is the right expansion brace. Professor, if you wanted to add another range after the 1 to 31, would it be 0 to 24 for the hours? Oh, yeah, of course. We can do it. Uh, uh, we're going to take a look at this later on. I'm pretty sure I'm doing something wrong over here. Uh, but I have an example to show you. I don't use this very often, at least not with the LS command. So this hour in which format it is? 24 hour format. 24 hour. OK, so the 24 hour format is from 0, 0, right, which is noon, midnight, to 23, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other range will be zero the to seconds are, and it's written in two digits, so 60, 0, 0, 2. Well, 59. 59. 59. 59, because once you get, and then here yeah, will be, it, will be, it will be actually a one because it turns then, and then the system will automatically do it. Mm, we're making a mistake somewhere else here. I think we're just getting too complicated. <laughs> uh, well, here is the thing though. A lot of times I have to deal in the command line with CSV files that I get, which is comma separated files. And sometimes it takes me a little bit to build these kind of wildcards, but they save me a ton of time in the future once I have a wildcard in particular built. Because for instance, what if you're looking for a photo that one of your clients took in a hard drive that is very old and you want, you want to get that picture? You know the picture was taken in the year 2001, right? You know it was taken in the year 2001. Wouldn't this solve the problem over here? For example, if the picture was taken in 2001, right? And you do LS 2000 here, let's narrow it down to this. The client tells you, hey, I know I took the picture. Like, let's, let's, let's remove, let's rename this picture over here, right? So let's do MV, MV, and let's rename it to 20, 2001. And it was taken in December 31st for New Year's Day, right? December 21st. Also at the same time, so it was December 21st, 1846, that PNG, right? So the client is looking for that picture, right? And he has hired you to get all the pictures that were taken that day cameras most of the time put a date on the pictures that they take right yes the phone camera does that too so you can build a wildcard to match specifically that save that in a hard drive and boom you already made easy money for your client you already solved your problem what is the what is the 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 opposite of doing that well good luck in your clicking i'll go catch my check me while you do your clicking unless mm -hmm. 2000 to 2001 because he doesn't remember exactly, but he does remember that it was between the months of uh, November and December, 
and he doesn't care about the rest, right? Why this why code isn't working? Because the data of the picture to find out the date if the oh, name actually it makes sense why he's not finding it. Because here I have this. I should use this. LS 2000 to 2001. Professor, I can look at why that is the why this doesn't work. It should work. Yes, you were saying. What if the date's only in the metadata, and not the file name? Is there a way to search? Yes, yes, there is. And if you want to learn it right away, Thomas. Uh, da, 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 Linux commands slash home that HTML. Yes, here this command solves your problem. Find, 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 find right there. You can look with you can use this command to search for metadata and it supports wildcards. Thanks, Professor. As a matter of fact, this is the command that I would use to find that particular picture. I'm gonna get back to you. I'm gonna get back to you on this because I don't want to spend all your time just building one wildcard. I know that I'm doing something wrong over there, but in all personal honesty, I don't know what I'm doing and what I'm doing wrong. So I'm gonna take a look at that later on. Let me see something real quick, real fast. Yeah, I wanna take a look at why that didn't work. But... Here are some examples of using the wildcard. This example over here, it's the one that I did uh, a while ago to showcase this example of having uh, you know, a set of numbers in the beginning of a file name plus using the username as part of it. Uh, you can read this slowly on your time. As a matter of fact, in your lab, you will read it slowly. And let's continue over here. This is something I want to expand on. Uh, if you ever have the opportunity to learn regular expressions, please do. It's a part of programming that's gonna make your life easier. Now, it's, uh, there is something called regex character classes that you can use with your wildcards as well. For example, if you want to list all the files who have a lowercase letter, right at the beginning, you can use the lower boxy character class for that. This is the same thing as using A to Z. Whichever of them you use, I don't particularly care. I would put one example of this and one example of this in your lab so that you can have it for future references. In your midterm, I don't care which one you use. If this is easier for you, great. If this is easier for you, then great as well. Here is a little summary of file globbing. You should put that in your notes. You should put that in your notes. Let's talk about brace expansion. You have saw me using brace expansion already. Brace expansion is when you use those curly braces to expand on a particular uh, command. For instance, if I want to create a whole directory structure like you saw before, I can use mkdir minus p music and inside the music directory, create two directories called jazz and rock. Inside each and every one of these directories, create three directories called mp3 files, videos and OGG files. And inside each and every one of these directories, create three directories called new one, new two, and new three. Just so you know, you have a question in your midterm that will require you to use this. Professor? Yes. I have a question. Can I also create multiple directories just in one line and also on the same line, multiple files? No. You will have to, you will have to you will have to create to do to do two commands. It can be one single line, but it will be two commands. And the reason okay. why it will be two commands is because MKDIR creates directories. The touch command creates files. So and separated by semicolon, right? Exactly. If you separate by semicolon, yeah. As a matter of fact, why don't we give it a try? For instance, I'm gonna create MKDIR and I'm gonna call this uh, summer uh, 2020, right? And I'm gonna, this directory doesn't exist. Yeah. So I'm gonna create a parent directory. And then inside here, I'm gonna create another directory called VAC for my vacation pictures. I'm gonna create it for project, for a project that I did in the garden, for example. And I'm also gonna create one called family. 
for whatever other reason. I don't care. But inside those three folders, inside each and every one of those folders, I'm going to create two more folders. And those folders are going to be called new and old. So I'm going to create one called old. And another one create called new, right? Perfect. Yeah. Now I'm going to do touch, right? And in the touch, with touch command, I'm going to create one directory inside. I'm going to create one directory inside one file called... I'm gonna go inside summer. Now, obviously, the tab is not gonna work here because the files don't exist yet. So I have to type everything from scratch. Summer and inside summer here, I'm gonna put vac, comma, and I'm gonna put project, project, and then inside project, I'm gonna put family, and then. Inside here, I'm going to create three files. And they are going to be called file. Actually, I'm going to call it notes. One, two, three. So you're putting, you're putting the same files on those three directories. On back, three project, directories and family. Here. Okay. Exactly. So if you press enter and you do three, summer 2020, you're going to see that inside new, you got notes. Inside new, you got Perfect. notes. And inside new, you got notes. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you. Can you refresh my mind on the minus p at the beginning? For for creating the parent directory, this mm -hmm. directory didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So if you don't do the pi, the p is the command is just gonna fail because the directory doesn't exist. If you create the p, which stands for parent, it will first create summer to 2020, and then it will proceed in creating the directories one after each other. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. There is something that I want you to notice from this command over here. And I want to ask you a question. Why aren't there notes one, two, and three in the old directory? Why 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 they added it? Yeah, good question. No. <laughs> why they're aren't? I was gonna ask that question too. Um, did, I did I specify? It wasn't specified in the second command. There you go. It wasn't specified. I told Touch to go inside Summer, to go inside VAC, right? Mm -hmm. To go inside Project and to go inside Family, but I didn't tell, uh, I didn't tell it that I wanted it in, that, that I wanted it in new or that I wanted it in old. So it went ahead and put it in the news uh, directory no. by default. No, it's inside the Family directory. I'm sorry, the Family the Project yeah. directory, and it's inside the VAC directory. I can run the command one more time, and if I want to specify it, I can do this. Now, if I say old and I say new, notice that now they are inside the new directory and the old directory. I want to ask you a question. How can I delete these ones over here using brace expansion too? Notes, brace, uh, one dot dot three, brace dash R. Well, what command remove files? Remove RM. RM. Right? Perfect. Now I need to get to this file over here, right? Where is this? Where are these files located? Back inside the back directory. Well, where is the back directory located? Inside wow. summer 2020. Well, the back directory is inside project, project but it's too. also inside family, and it's mm -hmm. also right. Well, yeah. the back directory is inside summer, right? And inside mm -hmm. summer, I have family and project, and I want to do it in one shot. So I'm gonna say summer 2020. And this is where brain expansion become useful because I want to put it inside. I want to delete everything from back and, and from project as well. And also from family. Right? Yes. And what, what do I want to delete? Well, I want to delete everything that says notes. This is one dot dot three. Mm -hmm. Let's run the three command one more time. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. You could also specify if you wanted to delete it from the old or the new directory, right? Yes, yes. Come on. Now there is nothing in the old. Yeah, I see. 
cool, right? Yeah, pretty useful, yes. It has a couple of more examples uh, on, on, on using the Brace expansions. Uh, I, I use the Brave expansions to, for a lot of things, specifically for creating entire directory structures in a single command because it makes my life easier. Specifically because, for instance, when I am working on my IDE, let's open PyCharm real quick, you know, I have my terminal right there with me and it makes my life easier. But when you're, you know, it's, it's, it's just a matter of efficiency for me, all honesty. Just give me one second. This was for my tutorial that I was doing early, recently on Docker and, and Git. See, I have my terminal over here and this will allow me, you know, to just be more efficient because if I need to create a couple of more directories over here, you know, and I know exactly the structure, I can just use the brace expansion to get it done in a single command and call it a day. <laughs> okay. Here is an exercise for you. Try to replicate that. Try to replicate that. Simple as that. So you have one parent directory music, and this is what I'm going to give you on your midterm. Obviously, it's going to be bigger than this, but I'm going to give you this on your midterm. I'm going to give you one picture like that, and I want you to, in a single command, replicate that. And it's similar to what you, we just did, what you just did. Very similar to what I just did, yes. It's very F similar. S minus B, the music, right, Professor? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to move, continue moving along because, you know, I don't want the video to be one hour and a half long, you know, and you having to sit down and watch that. That's just a pain. Uh, but anyway, here I put the solution anyway. It's a little video. It's a little GIF. Watch it whenever you get the chance. It shows you exactly how to get that, 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 that particular example done. Practice, 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 and practice. Come up with directory structures in your head. Draw yourself the same map, just with different names and different stuff. Right? And practice, practice, practice. Here is a bonus, uh, bonus, a couple of bonus commands that I want to show you. Sometimes you want to navigate the file system in a different way than just, you know, using commands. So let's install something called Ranger and let's start NNN. Uh, so let's do sudo. Actually, I'm just going to use install because I have install NNN and let's install Ranger. Ranger, right? That's not going to work in your system, by the way, because you don't have my aliases installed, which is an alias is just one word that replaces an entire command. And in my case, I build an alias for sudo apt install so that I don't have to type sudo apt install every time I want to install something. I can show you how to do that if you want. So NNN is... Let's, so let's do Ranger first. It's a nice little program that allows me to navigate my file system using literally my arrow keys. See? Mm -hmm. Let's go to pictures. And let's, play, let's, let's take a look at one of the pictures. Uh, this one. Mm -hmm. Nice, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people like, a lot of people use Ranger a lot. I don't like Ranger. I prefer NNN. I don't know, I just like NNN more. No, nothing in particular against Ranger. It's just, it's just what I prefer. <laughs> Mostly because Ranger I discovered it first and then I discovered the other one. So it's probably just biased. There you go. Uh, the tree command, you already know it. I introduced you to the tree command earlier that I do in previous semesters. Uh, and congratulations, you're done with managing files and directories. You know everything you need to know to manage files in the command line, to copy, remove, rename files, to list files. You, 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 if you learn this PowerPoint very well, you already have more than half of the battle won when it comes to learning the command line on Linux. And starting next week, we're going to fo focus on more specific commands to manage files and do other more specific stuff. But what we just covered right now is canonical to the usage of the command line. This PowerPoint, save it, read it, go over it, make notes on it. I don't know, put it in a sandwich and eat it, whatever you want to do with it. <sighs> make sure you understand it very well. Literally, your midterm comes from this PowerPoint, at least 95% of it. Does that make sense?
They're telling us the exam is going to be hard. <laughs> That's what I'm trying it's to say. Gonna, it's, not, it's not going to be hard. It's going to require thinking. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know how to use that. But it's going to require thinking. Let me give you an example. Uh, do I have an example of the midterm from other semesters? Let me see. Midterm box. I, I should probably just make the midterm from one of the semesters available to you. And that's, that's no way you, you can just practice with an Yeah, actual we can just practice that. That yeah. actually is a good idea, Professor. Yeah, that, yeah, let me see. I have the midterm assignment from fall 2019. It's probably not going to be like this. So, yeah, it's definitely not going to be like this one. This one is way, way harder than, mm -hmm. than what it is supposed to be. Uh, actually, yeah, because this one has 10 questions and your midterm only has five. So, but the, it's great because it's going to be good for you to practice. Actually, this one has only eight questions. It's gonna be very good for you to practice, you know. Uh, so let me make it. Let me make it. Uh, publish to the web. Publish. Okay. Here you go. I'm gonna put it in the Slack so you can go open it now if you want. Okay. It's gonna be in the general tab, yeah. Example. Midterm. You're not going to get a question regarding building a virtual machine. So question one, you can completely ignore if you want. I might ask you uh, a question to elaborate on. Like I give you a problem and you tell me how would you solve the problem in a paragraph. I might do something like that, but I'm definitely not doing. Uh... So let's take a look. Let's take a look at a good example here. Question number two, for instance. Here is a little problem that I have for you. So, so. Maria uh, start her new semester in a month from now. She's taking two classes, CS 150 and CS 230. Normally, Maria creates a directory for each course, for each class that she takes. So she creates notes and she creates homeworks. Uh, she creates a directory for every class. And then inside the directory, she creates notes and homework. You already know that I want you to use Brace expansion there, right? Yes. There you go. Inside the notes directory, she creates two files, raw and formatted. Inside, uh, there is a couple of PDF files that you have to download, and then you have to move them there. Here is the problem that you have to solve, and here are the instructions that I, I want you to use, right? Create a directory for each class that she's using. I want absolute value. From your, uh, from your home directory, create every subdirectory in the class. Two points extra if you can complete it on a single command. Download the books over here, and then paste them in their, in their appropriate directory. List all the files and directories recursively inside the documents showing the file size and classified, meaning that you will have to do this and look for the word that matches the, the string classified here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. And so and so and so. So this is, see, this requires thinking. And that's the thing. It requires thinking. So it requires that you want, if you have an understanding of the commands, you know which command to use when. So the cheat sheet helps you because you don't have to memorize the structure of the command. Instead, all you have to do is remember how to use it. And how do you remember how to use it? Practice, 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 practice. This How much time will we have for the midterm? I was planning on giving you the midterm the second week, the second week of November. Okay. That was the plan. But then a week before, you have an assignment that that you're gonna do, which is gonna be a lab where I'm gonna go over some stuff that are gonna be in the midterm. Literally, I have the midterm, and then from the midterm, I make a lab, and then that lab is you can use it to practice, and then you submit the lab. But that lab is going to be already 25% of your grade for your midterm. So if you submit the lab on time, you already earn 25% of your midterm. But the actual midterm will be completed um, during the meeting class, meeting time? Yes, it will be during meeting time. OK. Anyway, I don't have any questions for you. And if you have any questions for me, let me know. I'll stop. I will stop the recording right now. Professor, I have a question about the deliverable.